Hello gamers, I am Mike the Zorch, and this is a Inside Star Citizen edition of Zorch Reacts. I'm a little late with this one. Actually, I'm very late with this one, because there's been another Inside Star Citizen. Uh, that video, I mean, reacting to that one, I haven't watched it yet. Uh, that one will come out on Sunday, and this one's coming out today, and I know this is April 1st. This is not an April 1st thing. Um, frankly, I didn't even think about doing an April 1st video. Uh, I could have really thought of making one, but I've been so busy with other stuff that I didn't really think of doing an April 1st one. Uh, anyway, today's video, actually last week's video, is player experience, where you take a look at the uh, player experience team. So, get into that and uh what that's all about hey y'all space dad here hello processing your feedback while in the middle of development is a monumental task it's uh, no secret that the Star Citizen community has no shortage of opinions. Oh, and your yeah, tireless yeah. efforts in testing the Persistent Universe at all levels, from Evocati to PTU to even our live alpha environment, requires multiple initiatives to ensure that valuable feedback is properly received. That's the thing about being a backer of Star Citizen. You are a part of the dev team. Unofficially. Uh, you're playing a game that is an active development that is not done yet and they need your feedback because as the game goes through development you know the ui that they have and the controls that they use and the mechanics that are in the game i guarantee you when gta 5 was in development a lot of things changed throughout the game's development cycle the ui underwent a lot of changes. I bet you a lot of things underwent a lot of changes. Some things that they thought they were going to use get got thrown out. That's why whenever you are whenever you see people um do data mining in the games and they find all sorts of stuff that got left out. You know, little bits and pieces of things that are still in the code or assets that are still in the game's um, asset library that are still there that were never used. That's because a lot of things just get dumped. A lot of things change. And Star Citizen is no different. I mean, a lot of stuff has changed in the UI and everything. In fact, they're, they're currently replacing everything in the UI with their new building blocks uh, system. In fact, there I've, I've heard there's some interesting stuff coming up with that in the next... Uh, next patch but that will be for next week's video or sunday's video at least but uh a lot of sub chain a lot of changes happen and these guys the experience team they're the ones that take the feedback from us the backers this game needs our input in order to get done because ultimately, it's going to be, you know, they can't, they cannot, um, how should I word this? They cannot, you know, conceive of every possible scenario that someone will run into playing the game. They need regular people playing the game to try it and see how things work and see what doesn't work. And we've run into plenty of things that don't work and those things that don't work are going to be replaced and replaced with something better. And so they need that input. Anyway, let's continue. Whether that's the developers themselves mm -hmm. spending their time in Spectrum, Reddit, Twitch, oh. and YouTube. That's the other thing. The devs, the members of the dev team actually talk to the players. How many other game developers do that? Tell me, how many? I mean, other than to uh, 
scream at them, call them bigots for not liking their game, or calling them uh, racists, or other isms, or uh, not liking their game, or 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 to complain and 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 scream and cry and 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 bitch at gamers. How many other game developers actually talk to their players? actually talk to them and say, what can we do to make this better? How many? I dare you to tell me how many there are. Put them in the comments below. Tell me, how many other developers do that? How many other developers, instead of just, instead of the ones that go out there and yell at their uh, players for not liking a certain thing and calling them different names and saying they're racist or, or, or something else, or not liking a certain feature, how many other developers out there actually go onto their forums, actually talk to them and say, did you like this thing? Um, did you like this feature? Uh, if you didn't, why didn't you like it? And what do you think we could do to change it and make it better? I would like to know. To our growing community team and the likes of Ulf, Jake, Tamara, Christian, Christian, and more. <laughs> As part of our continuing efforts to shine our proverbial spotlight on those folks who don't often get seen or heard from in traditional game dev spaces, we're changing up our origin story format this week to take a look at an entire team who's, who outside of Evocati, folks may not even know exists. Mm -hmm. uh, whose efforts, much like those that we've just mentioned, is dedicated to collecting, processing, interpreting, and especially testing that feedback before passing it along to our developers for any potential action. So allow us to formally introduce you to the player experience team. In player experience, we're basically one of the many voices of the players. The reason why a player experience team matters the most because not compared to other teams. <laughs> Player experience actually takes the feedback from the community, actually understands the bugs that the live environment is facing. And we'll use those to make the game better. Better mic, lady. A day in the life of player experience team is all over the place, actually. <laughs> Sorry, I have to laugh. <laughs> we uh, almost don't know exactly what we're going to be doing that day. We're kind of like the late crew here. We start our day at 2 p.m. To be able to uh, play alongside players when these builds go out. Beyond there, uh, our day can exist from reviewing features that are upcoming. We go to the issue council. We check to see what bugs have been reported in the... Oh, and then there's the issue council. Those are the unsung heroes of the game. Those are the guys that compile and put together bug reports for the game. And this game has a lot of bugs and they receive a lot of reports. And it's a, a for understand, it is not an easy job compiling through a lot of reports, finding out which bugs are critical and which ones are not, which ones have to be fixed now and then get those off to the dev teams who have to then decide you know which ones are the most critical that need to be fixed now and can be saved for later or or who can who's best which team is best to work on which bugs and everything that that's not an easy job the latest builds one of our main objectives is taking those issues through the issue council um and seeing if we can produce it in game Sometimes we get uh, what are called QATRs, uh, QA test requests from devs. We report on those bugs. We tell developers, here's what our findings were and, and how we got to the bugs. And here's what didn't work and what didn't work. <laughs> and try all types of weird and interesting ways of breaking um, the game. Yeah. Where are the gap between the players and the developers? Working alongside the community team to make sure that your feedback gets heard. There's traditional QA and we have the live QA from the player experience team. Traditional QA takes care of upstream features as they're getting developed, while player experience actually attack things from a player experience point of view. 
going through the motions that a player would go through mm -hmm. to try to target the issues in a way that dev QA probably wouldn't be able to reproduce. Some of us take a look in the specializations of the game, uh, you know, like I go into specialization of medical gameplay, so I could see the ins and outs. I focus a lot of my time on mining and trading issues. Other members of the team love to dogfight. Some people love mm -hmm. to do FPS combat or missions or bounty hunt. It's uh, all over the place. So we have a great spread and we kind of oh. get to have fun doing what we are excited to do. I think the main thing that I would want backers to know about um, our job and what our team does is that, you know, we're listening to your feedback. Our team itself is actually quite full of backers. It kind of helps me put myself in their shoes rather than just look at the data and make a decision based off that data and not necessarily gameplay. You know, a, a joke made on the team a lot is that it's uh, easier, easier to learn uh, QA than it is to learn Star Citizen. Um, so, you know, I already had my pet peeve bugs I wanted fixed. I already knew how the issue council worked. I think it's important players do know that we see the issues, we see the issue council. I know I'm being quiet, but I'm just, just taking it all in. Uh, we have some automated systems and sometimes your issue council might say not a bug, but we are tracking it and we are aware of it. Uh, we go back manually and open them up when we see that happen and we do want to address it and get it into the hands of the developers no i'm not the reason your ship got nerfed might be actually responsible for that a little bit uh don't put that in there please <laughs> i know the aries <laughs> ion has uh been brought up before whenever we're looking to make changes to ships it's a very much involved process with a lot of decision makers we translate the concerns that players have and bring those into the developers eyes so, in essence, we're just the messengers. So. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> if there's one thing I want everyone to know, it's uh, we're all um, very much passionate about how this project is run because we absolutely believe and love the project. Being able to interact with a very dedicated community definitely allows us to gain a lot of insight into what the game should be and what the community envisioned the game to be. In the end, they they're the ones who are really supporting the game and they're the ones who are playing the game and we're making a game for people to play it and have fun. And this is why, despite what all the haters will say and all the conspiracy, all the um, it's a scam conspiracy theorists say, this game's going to succeed. It's going to succeed because it has people behind it like these guys who are passionate the developers are passionate about the project. And if you notice, if you've ever noticed games where the developers were really pa truly passionate, not, not this fake company PR passionate, but true passion for what they are working on for their project, you notice those games actually turn out really good. Those games succeed. And the games where they just they act, they go through the motions of acting like they're passionate about their project. But when you finally launch it, it's a piece of crap. You can tell. Well, you can tell when the game's a piece of crap when it launches, but these guys are passionate about their project. They're passionate about what they're working on. They're passionate about their jobs. And that's why Star Citizen is going to succeed when it launches. That's why this game's going to be a success. It's because of people like this who are working on this game. And you will be able to tell. In fact, you can tell now because even though it has its bugs, it's a game in development. It's going to have bugs. Just deal with it. You can feel the passion. You can feel the desire to to make this game a success just when you just play it when you get into it and you just try it out you can feel what it is they're trying to what want to do you can feel it and that's why this is game this game's going to succeed and um i think that's 
that's the most important part of it. People are at the heart of the Star Citizen experience, both from you outside and mm -hmm. those within. And in the case of the player experience team, often the same folks transitioning from one to the other. And up next, it's time for another sprint report, so let's get to it. Okay. Let's start things off with these new docking areas being created for our high-tech space stations like August Dunlow found in orbit above the planet Crusader. Hmm. Now, while docking came online a little while ago, several space stations in their respective archetypes still needed this work to okay, enable so they're docking putting another all space the stations above the Crusader. system. What about Fort Olisar? I wonder what Next they're going to do with that. Next up, let's check in with the Drake Corsair and these gray box images of the mess hall interior, ah. which looks to take some of its cues from what you may already be familiar with. That's the ship on the outside that looks like the Twilight from Clone Wars. The, the uh, Drake Crusader. That's the exploration ship. He says, they're, they are this far now, and it's not too long from now we'll get it. We're going to finally get it. From the if, Drake they're, if they're at this phase, they're not too far from getting it out. Filler. There's also the cockpit where pilots spend most of their time. Mm -hmm. And an up-close look at the dashboard. Nice. And finally, a look at perspective pilot visibility. We've also got these looks at the Drake Vulture, which is currently hey, rounding out. go back a little bit. Yeah, a look that at looks a pilot. lot like... Yeah, that's definitely the Drake look. That definitely looks like a Drake cockpit. Um, definitely looks very similar to the uh, Cutlass with uh, how the screens are laid out, how the NF, how the um, multifunction displays, MFDs are laid out. Very similar to the Cutlass. Visibility. We've also got these looks at the Drake Vulture, which is currently rounding out Final Art Phase with some perspective liveries. Let's go ahead and do one of those social media quizzes in the comments. <laughs> which one is your favorite? One, two, three, or four. I like that one. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and from brand new ships to those that have seen better days, Let's take another look at the continuing development of our upcoming Reclaimer derelicts. Mm. Now, as part of the work our Montreal team is doing, Reclaimer most derelicts, derelicts will yeah, fall yeah. into one of three categories. Old, new, and inhabited. And as part of those inhabited, you can see here preliminary work on housing modules to be found both outside and within the wreckage itself. Tech is also mm. being developed to allow the overall object container that contains the derelict within to pick up biome information from wherever it's dynamically spawned. That's that cool. means if it's spawned in snow, it gets snow covering, or in this case, ivy and a variety of plant growth. Hmm. The team is also building up a new library of derelict shaders for various states of decomposition. And when all this is brought together, it'll mean a greater variety of points of interest for you to discover those and new are, mission areas spawn once you accept the job. Gantuan all ships. dynamically placed and dressed as needed. And before we move on, a short video look at the interior habitable spaces currently being fleshed out. Hmm. Oh. And then lastly, let's take a look at current VFX progress on the handheld salvage beam we discussed on last week's Ooh. Star Citizen Live with Mike Snowden. Now, while it's important to state that this effect you're seeing here is not final, repeat, not final, and this is a showcase only of the VFX involved, I think, I hope we can all agree. You can see the this particles. Is still really cool as heck. Shooting I mean, just up look at this from thing. it. The way the particles are being atomized and sucked up off the whole yeah, ship. That's cool. I'm going to tell you, I just kind of sat and watched this on loop for about five minutes straight and was thoroughly mesmerized. In fact, Amanda, let's change up the music and just let this play out for a bit. Really get our zen on. <laughs> I said get our zen on. <laughs> You're messing with me. There we go. 
<laughs> Alrighty then. That is cool looking. I hope that's the uh, final state. That is cool looking. Of course. Oh, and that... Let me come back here. This superstructure that's here, all this here, this detail, every ship has that. It's in every ship. So when the ship is damaged or destroyed, you will see this interior. These are all this is this is a part of the ship. Every every single ship model you you see in the game, all this is in a, in here. It's not rendered at the time when you see just the outside, but it that all all that detail is there. These ships are way more detailed than you might think they are. Of course, we'll learn more about salvage, ship-based and handheld, next quarter ahead of its much-anticipated introduction to the Persistent Universe. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a so what did we learn big this deal. Well, we learned that it takes quite a bit to keep up with the massive amount of feedback the players provide. Yeah. And then it's all hands on deck with the developers, the community team, the player relations team, and more to do it. And I'm gonna name drop the customer service team and the concierge team because they deserve a shout out too. <laughs> uh, that derelicts are shaping up to bring new gameplay opportunities through old and busted spaceships. And that the day when we can leave messages for others in the hull of abandoned spacecraft using the handheld salvage gun are close at hand. <laughs> what will you write first? For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next week. You can just imagine. There will be a lot of dick and balls in Star Citizen drawn on the inner walls of derelict ships. <laughs> there will be many, many penises drawn in Star Citizen with that gun. <laughs> it will happen. It will. Mark my words. There will be many. Anyway, this was an interesting episode. We got to see a member of the team that we uh, are, or to see a team that we don't normally usually get to see that is made up of people who are backers to the game. And as I said, when you see this kind of passion for a project, you know it's going to succeed. This game is definitely going to be finished. They're going to release this game. No matter what the haters say, no matter what the conspiracy theorists believe, this game's going to succeed because it has that kind of passion behind it. When you have that much desire for something to exist, there's nothing on earth that can stop it from coming into existence. Nothing. So, anyway, this was last week's Inside Star Citizen. I really like the effects of that salvage gun. I hope that's the final, final uh, effect, because that was pretty cool where you saw it just dissolving and then the particles just being sucked up into the into the uh, beam. That was cool. I hope they keep that because that is like very cool. That's how I th I think that would have worked. How I think, you know, that sort of thing would work. Anyway, uh, put this one short because I'm going to record the other one right after this and then release it Sunday. But uh, this was another Inside Star Citizen. I have been Mike the Zorch. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider subscribing and click that bell icon so you get notifications of new videos. Don't forget to check out the Gamers Bay community over on MeWe. MeWe is a social media platform that runs no ads and does not collect data. They are focused on protecting your privacy. Anyway, until next time, I'll see you guys. Oh, 
you're still here. Ah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Um. What was I going to say? Oh. Oh, yes, that's right. That's right. Another... Another the prof another professor and friends is coming this weekend, and uh, this one's gonna be a doozy. This one's gonna be a big one. We're gonna be talking about something something very big's been announced, and I don't think it's really hit the news cycle yet. Uh, I've seen an announcement about it, but it hasn't hit the gaming news cycle yet in a big way. I haven't seen hardly anybody talk about it. Actually, I haven't seen anybody talk about it. It's only been in one. Uh, source so far and this is gonna be very big very huge so keep your eyes peeled for that episode coming up anyway i've been mike the zorch thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time